I am Dr. Amber, and today we are going to review the eye conditions that you are most likely to see on NCLEX. So let's not lose sight of what's important. First, how do we support clients with visual impairment? Well, remember, it is all about safety and promoting the client's independence. We start by announcing our presence before approaching the client to prevent the client from being startled. And we must also orient the client to the room and ensure all personal items are kept within reach. We should also maintain a well-lit, clutter-free environment for the client to walk without tripping. And speaking of walking, remember to offer your arm and walk one step ahead of the client when assisting them with ambulation. Clients should be instructed to fill chairs, beds, or bedside commodes with their hands and the back of their legs before sitting to prevent falls. And finally, during meals, describe food locations using the clock method to promote adequate nutrition. So if on NCLEX you have an option to feed a client with visual impairments, this is not correct. Instead, we should tell the client their mashed potatoes are at three o'clock to promote independence. So now let's briefly review the eye problems that cause visual loss that you are most likely to see on NCLEX. First, we have glaucoma, which is all about increased intraocular pressure that can damage the optic nerve. And remember, there are two types, chronic and acute. Next is cataracts, which causes a cloudy or opaque lens to develop slowly over time. Think of it like the lens fogging up. And finally, retinal detachment, where the retina peels away from the back of the eye. So which two are emergent conditions that require immediate intervention? Remember for NCLEX, acute glaucoma and retinal detachment are emergencies that cause permanent vision loss if left untreated. So would you know how to spot these conditions? Well, you will by the end of this video. So remember, glaucoma is the pressure problem. It starts when aqueous humor does not drain properly. As a result, intraocular pressure, or IOP, builds, and the optic nerve gets compressed. This results in vision loss and nerve damage. So there are two types of glaucoma you must know on NCLEX, and they will want you to be able to differentiate them. First is open angle, which is chronic and painless and causes gradual tunnel vision. Think that the drain is partially blocked but still open, so the pressure increases slowly. The second type is angle closure, or acute, and this is sudden, painful, and a medical emergency. Think the drain is all the way closed and pressure is increasing fast. So let's talk about nursing interventions for glaucoma, starting with anti-glaucoma medications. So to manage IOP, we use eye drops like Timolol, a beta blocker, or Bromotidine, an alpha-2 adrenergic agonist. Remember, these medications can block the sympathetic nervous system and cause adverse effects if absorbed systemically. They can cause bradycardia or hypertensive crisis. So teach clients to apply gentle pressure over the inner canthus for one minute after administering drops. This is called punctal occlusion and it helps decrease systemic absorption. So remember on NCLEX, avoid anticholinergics in clients with glaucoma because they dilate the pupil and raise IOP. We should also anticipate IV mannitol administration for acute glaucoma. And finally, if medications fail, surgery may be needed. And remember with acute glaucoma, the client requires immediate emergency surgery to save their vision. So now it's time for our first NCLEX quick check. Let's pause and see if you can answer these questions. Which type of glaucoma causes pain? Acute angle closure glaucoma causes severe eye pain. Which type causes gradual vision loss? That's open angle chronic glaucoma that causes gradual vision loss or tunnel vision. And finally, how do you prevent systemic absorption of glaucoma eye drops? Punctal occlusion. Remember, the client should hold pressure to the inner canthus for one minute after administration. So now let's move on to glaucoma teaching. We should teach clients to use eye drops exactly as prescribed. They should remove any contact lenses and wait 15 minutes before inserting them. If using multiple eye drops, they should wait five to 10 minutes between medications to prevent dilution. 
And finally, they should follow proper eye drop administration steps. So let's quickly review those. When administering eye drops, we should gently shake the medication bottle before use. We should have the client tilt their head back and look up. We should pull down the lower lid and instill the drops and make sure you avoid touching the eye with the applicator tip. And after instilling, once again, we should apply pressure to the inner canthus for one full minute to prevent systemic effects. So now let's talk about cataracts, a gradual clouding of the lens caused by UV exposure and aging. Clients with cataracts will often have progressive blurry or cloudy vision, opaque lens, and they will typically have difficulty with tasks like ADLs and driving at nighttime. We should teach the client prevention. They should do this by avoiding UV exposure, such as wearing sunglasses and hats. And for early treatment, it is all about promoting independence and ADLs. So how do we do this? With stronger prescription glasses, using large print text, and maintaining safety with adequate lighting and implementation of fall precautions like grab bars. And remember, the only way to truly correct cataracts is through surgical lens replacement. Now, pause for our next quick check and see if you can answer these questions. What findings are signs of cataracts? Progressive blurry vision, opaque lens, and difficulty with ADLs and driving at night. Now, let's talk about retinal detachment, and this one is a true emergency. It occurs when the retina peels away from the tissue below. It leads to sudden painless vision loss that is permanent if left untreated. So remember on NCLEX, if a client has sudden floaters in the visual field or acute vision loss, they must immediately seek treatment to prevent permanent blindness. Risks include aging, diabetic retinopathy, extreme nearsightedness, and past eye surgery or trauma. So what are the findings that indicate retinal detachment? Painless acute vision loss, floaters, flashes of light, and a curtain dropping across the visual field. So this is often described by clients as a black curtain or shadow. So remember on NCLEX, painless vision loss with floaters, flashes of light, and a black curtain across the visual field is an emergency and you must intervene. So how do we treat retinal detachment? Well, clients will need emergency surgery to reattach the retina, but post-operative care is key for success. So for all eye surgeries, clients should avoid any activities post-operatively that can increase IOP, such as bending, lifting, coughing, or straining. And we should closely monitor for signs of infection, such as pain, eyelid swelling, and purulent drainage from the eye. And after retinal detachment surgery specifically, clients should monitor for signs of recurrent detachment, such as floaters, flashes, and sudden vision loss. And they must wear an eye patch to decrease any strain or rapid eye movements that can cause recurrent detachment. So now... Let's pause for our next quick check and see if you can answer these questions. What are three signs of retinal detachment? Flashes of light, floaters, and a curtain-like shadow across the visual field. And what should we teach clients after eye surgery? Well, after any eye surgery, we should avoid any activities that increase IOP, such as bending, lifting, coughing, or straining. And after retinal reattachment surgery, a client must wear an eye patch to prevent rapid eye movement that can cause recurrent detachment. So now let's move on to our last topic, types of eye trauma you will most likely see on NCLEX. Let's start with the most common one, foreign body. This occurs when a small object like dust or an eyelash enters the eye, causing photophobia and tearing. I'm sure we've all been there with that miserable feeling of something in our eye. So what do we do to fix it? Well, we should just irrigate with saline from the inner to the outer canthus and remind clients to never rub the eye or the object can scratch the cornea, causing a corneal abrasion. Next is penetrating eye injury. This occurs when an object like glass or metal pierces the eye and can damage internal structures. So what should we do to fix it? Well, just remember, all interventions focus on preventing further injury. So first, 
never remove the object. This can cause further damage to ocular structures. We should also cover the affected eye with a shield. Even a paper cup works. And cover the uninjured eye too. I know you may be thinking, why both eyes? Well, remember, our eyes move together, so we should cover both eyes to prevent any ocular movement. And finally, surgery is expected. That is the only way to safely remove the object. So here is our final eye trauma, chemical eye burn. This occurs when chemicals enter the eye, like pepper spray or bleach. So for treatment, just remember to immediately irrigate the eye with water or saline from the inner to the outer canthus. And sometimes this requires copious amounts of irrigation fluid. So now you are ready for questions on eye conditions when taking the NCLEX.